What's up, Nail Geeks, and welcome back to another BKL video. This time we have another book series driving maker Sarah's inspiration for this collection, uh, specifically the book Kingdom of the Wicked, or rather the Kingdom of the Wicked series. Um, this apparently is a new series. I have such a huge book list, and I've also got a bunch of video games from Christmas time, so I'm not sure if I'll ever get through this massive pile, but I'm not going to complain having entertainment. So we have nine pieces to check out, including a new pastel multi-chrome type finish, which turned out to be my top pick of the collection, trumping over a blue, which is pretty, pretty impressive if you ask me. So without further ado, let's dive right in. And first up is Game Playing Deviant. This is described as deep midnight blue with glowy blue shimmer and hollow flakes. This is my second pick in the set. As I previously mentioned, I was very shocked that it was not my first, even though it is absolutely beautiful. Blue lovers, of course, we're gonna flock to this one. It's got so much depth, like a galaxy sort of depth from all the hollow flakes, and it's easy peasy to build up. I think three light to normal coats is perfect. I went normal on my coats just because I kept my nails, my falsies a little bit longer for this specific batch of swatches. And it does dry down flat, true to how those flakes tend to dry down. No texture or anything, it's super smooth, but you'll wanna get something to plump it up and really give some dimension to those flakes. So use a good glossy top coat. And here is Prince of Envy. This is described as a deep olive green base with rich emerald shimmer and hollow flakes. This is very springy in my opinion. I think it's one of those types of greens that flatters across the board and it does have a more jellier sort of finish, though I would not classify this as sheer. It definitely builds to opacity at the second coat for me. However, I like my nails having that straight up thick plumpness on the overall look. So I did take it to a third normal coat and no issues with dry down time. Everything worked beautiful, impeccable. I've expected no less from this brand. So for me, if you have any type of longer length to your nails, I think three normal coats is perfect. This also dries on flat because it's so packed full of flakes and shimmer, no texture, but again, you'll want something to plump it up and really help to get those flakes to shine. And then my top pick for the collection is Princess of Starlight. This is a white multi-chrome that shifts from silver to blue to green. Sarah does state in our PR information that this is an Aurora-based polish, meaning the pigment itself, and it could have a yellow tinge to the bottle when you look at it. Now, I do agree with that. There was a touch of a gold tint to the bottle, and if you rewind back for a second, you'll see it on my bottle shot, but on the nail, it does not translate like that. Because I swatch on clearer tips, I think it helps the best to show you guys opacity. I feel like it gives more of a, a pessimistic view for opacity. And that also translates over to a yellow tint. And I notice a lot of Aurora-like shimmers will have that yellow tint, um, especially on more sheer types of polishes, but I did not see that on this one. This is straight pearl type of white. It is beautiful in person. If I had to describe it in my own words, I would say it has a strong vintage pearlescent type of vibe with a very strong shifty Aurora modern twist to it. It just makes me feel like a princess. It's got a lot of dimension. And here we've got some Lie Lilac. This is a pale blue pastel multi-chrome that shifts from green to blue and has sparkles of orange and silver light reflective glitter. This has a very frosty sort of feeling and how it builds up. And I'm gonna suggest three coats with a glossy top coat. It did have quite a bit of a, that squishy sort of factor, but I had no issues with over buildup. So if you tend to polish heavy handed, this is gonna be very forgiving for your specific polishing style. Now it does have a very harsh dry down, not matte per se, but it is almost thirsty like, and that's just because it's got so much of that frosty sort of effect. Again, I would suggest a thicker, glossy top coat. Those of you rocking nubbins, I would still suggest going up to three coats with this one, just because you want the maximum sparkle factor on your nails, but I would caution going very light in that regard. And Fair Winter Lady is described as an icy pastel multi-chrome that shifts from red to green with sparkles of cobalt and silver light reflective glitter. 
Now, Fair Winter Lady and Same Lie Lilac, the last one. Those two, in my opinion, are the lighter types of overall finishes out of the entire collection. So I'm going to say that you'll probably see just the slightest, slightest bit of a free edge if you have a really prominent white free edge. Overall, I had really excellent coverage even on my clear tips, which again, I think is a more pessimistic view of a visible nail line. And you can kind of get an idea of that on my finger wiggles here. Now, both of the polishes have reflective glitters, but surprisingly enough, I had no issues with texture. These were not, I could hardly tell there was reflective glitters in these given like the lack of texture but I would still suggest a good glossy top coat. And I think it's because they're more of a scattered type of reflective sparkle as opposed to these straight up loaded up reflective glitter finishes that we've seen. Now, because I was editing and I kept getting these two mixed up, I wanted to do a side by side so you guys could see them directly because I was thinking if I saw these during the editing process and I was getting them confused, viewers might too. So just to keep everything straight, they are very different. I would say maybe like distant cousins if you're going to compare them directly like this, but in general, they're very, very different. All right, next we've got chaos. This is described as somewhere between a mustard and an olive, so a molive with emerald green shimmer and hollow flakes. I was surprised that I liked this one on myself. When I saw it in the bottle, I was like, oh no, it's a warm mustard color. That means it's gonna drown out on me and it's gonna look really awful on myself. But I, I didn't really see that. And you'll see in my, my full hand shot here in just a second that I thought it popped pretty well on me. So medium to deep skin tones, maybe not shy away from this one, maybe give it a shot that it will probably look pretty cool on you too. I think three coats is perfect here. And the shimmer is this lovely green sort of, I guess the pickles to the, to the mustard going on here. And it's pretty prominent in person. I wouldn't say it's the strongest, but I think my macro gives you a good idea of, it gives this nice soft green glow in the background. And here is another one of my top picks. This one is Discord, described as a black polish with silver to blue to green shimmer. When I was swatching this one, I was swearing up and down the labels must have been incorrect, that this must have been a magnetic polish. It's not magnetic, but oddly enough, the shimmer, just the way that they look, it looks like it could be though. So interesting there. It does dry down to have a very strong metallic like effect. It builds up very easily. It dries on quite harsh and almost like a semi false type of matte. So if glossy is your thing like myself, I would suggest a good plumping one here too. No issues with anything else. This is really beautiful. And despite it being a black polish, which I typically do not care for, I really liked this one. It's got a beautiful green at more subtle angles like on my macro shot, but it's almost like a black palette cleanser. I don't know. It was it was it was really interesting to me and I I thoroughly enjoyed it. And here we've got God of Idiocy. This is a deep reddish brown base with emerald to green shimmer and hollow flakes. So this is kind of like those first two I showed you guys in terms of formula. It easily builds up to opacity at three coats. Across the board, I'm gonna suggest three coats. BKL, in my opinion, you really want three coats because she does such wonderful special effects with the flakes and the shimmers that you want that strong payoff so that you can have that loud, obnoxious special effect on your nails. And God of ADC glows so good with that emerald, that true emerald type of glow. And then at the edges of your nails, you'll see that beautiful brown. It's a cool toned type of brown, but the shimmer itself warms it up. So we always appreciate that nice contrast between the shimmer and the base color. No issues with texture or anything. But again, I would suggest a thicker glossy top coat. And then lastly, we've got Outplayed. This is my last top pick in the set. This is described as an emerald to blue multi-chrome with a sky blue magnetic shimmer. Unmagnetized, it's a beautiful soft blue and shifts to green to purple. When I swatched this one, I once again knew this had to be a magnetic. I was in fact correct before I read the label on the, on the butt label, but um, I was so impressed with how it looked by itself. I decided to show completely 
what it looks like unmagnetized versus magnetized. This is very versatile if you wanted to wear it without doing the magnet and it's beautiful. It's a very, what I would describe as being a frosty metallic like multi-chrome finish. It's plump, it's thick and easy to build to opacity though I would caution going too hard on your brush strokes because it is prone to streaking if you tend to go pretty ham on how you polish. And then going in with DRK's Magic Magnetic Top Coat, you guys can see what it looks like. Also magnetized too. It reacted well to the top coat. The particles themselves are quite light in how they move, so I didn't need to finagle or do multiple layers of this to get it to, to work out for me. Easy application there and magnetize, I can't decide which one I like more. When you magnetize it, that green background takes a strong purple shift in the shaded lighting, and there is a ton of movement with that silver magnetic pigment. It, it's beautiful. It's definitely one that you wanna see in person. It's that contrast that I so appreciate on magnetic polishes. And then to wrap everything up, we've got the Will It Topper segment. This is where I demonstrate polishes over black to see if they're able to be worn layered and having more versatility. Okay, so we have lots of shimmers and we are never surprised with BKL being versatile because she does pack these so much with shimmer and that will always translate well to being layered. So you can see on each of these, um, yeah, they can absolutely be worn over black. Prince of Envy looks really beautiful. I think it just took over with the shimmer and also displays how much is in each bottle. Princess of Starlight looked so good over black, I almost expected it to be a topper because it just worked that well. It's so stunning. I think this would look great over any color. Now, the two, quote unquote, in my opinion, the, the, the frosty ones, same li lilac and Fair Winter Lady, both of these have more of a jelly lean as you use them over black or dark colors. So I think these are also incredibly versatile. I think they're respective tints to the base aren't going to be super noticeable, especially over whites and lighter colors like that. And Chaos, you can kind of see it on the video, but in person, that mustard tint is a touch more prominent than what you're seeing on the video. So personally, I would just be cautious with what you layer it. Discord, because it's got that blackened base to it, this also looked so nice over black. And I think you can wear this over darker colors, I don't think it would translate well over lighter colors. God of Idiocy, because it's got the same formula or similar, in my opinion, to game playing Deviant in Prince of Envy, of course it worked. And Outplayed, I would strongly suggest using the magnet if you are layering this one because it looks really cool and I think you'll get a better use out of the finish going on here when you magnetize it layered. So the new collection is going to drop January 19th and it's going to be on a open pre-order type format. I'm going to link you guys below to uh, the website if you want to check that out. Uh, if you've been paying attention to their Instagram, which I highly encourage you to join that or follow that and join the email subscription list because uh, this last um, after Christmas, New Year's time, we had a ton of releases. So we had Buzzmas and then we had um, some re-releases of colors from past mystery bags. There was a lot. So get on the website and check out the vault selection. There's a lot of spoilers and stuff you can see there and make sure you are subscribed to their email list. There is not going to be a full shebang option. However, if you add all nine polishes from this collection to your cart during checkout, you'll get 15% off of your entire order. So that's really nice. So I'm gonna have all this information in the description box below, including timestamps. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.